right. Hello, everyone. Let's get this thing situated. We are back in the closet. That's right. Dave Meltzer came into the closet. Let's see what you think about that. Perfect. Anyways, we're looking forward to an unbelievable day. Welcome, 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 everybody. Thank you for joining me. We got some uh, great, great um, things on store today. Some good questions. Please let me know. Everyone can hear me. I'm using my my ear pods. So, hey, everybody. Uh, let's see here. All of my team on here. Family Addiction. Congratulations, you two. How are you? Jeremy, thank you. Can you hear me okay, Jeremy? Give me the thumbs up. All right, let's go live with someone. We'll test it out that way and uh, get on to. All right. Looking good, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Here we go. There we are. Oh, I guess not. Anyway, Jeff the Entrepreneur, welcome. Let's get some questions going, everybody. It's early. Let's do this. Liam Curtis, nice one. Jesus, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Let's go live. Let's see here. We'll uh, look in here. Hello, hello, everyone. We got some questions going. Welcome, everybody, to the live. We're going to get some. Hey. Dave Meltzer, how are you, man? Trey Roth with the Live Lucky hat. I have been involved with, they when they started that company. I thought it was a great brand. And, yes. Uh, it's, an, it's been through a lot. So, yeah. anyway, what's going this, on, buddy? This was a surprise and delight. Uh, my my wife and I went to Unleash the Power Within uh, in L.A. with Tony Robbins. And after we bought our tickets, they sent this hat. Uh, and it came with a little card that actually I, I remember it was this little uh, like two by two black card and it said um, the quality of our lives is nothing more than the quality of our emotions the quality of our lives is nothing more than the quality of our emotions and I remember thinking like okay I I think that's true I don't know if that's a hundred percent true but I think that it's at least you know 80 or 90 percent true yeah. but if you that's know. true then yeah like how are you, Dave, managing the quality of your emotions and keeping yourself elevated and, and amidst the the craziness? Yeah. Tell me well, about that. Yeah, of course. You know, it's only what I have control of. So uh, to keep a peace in a sense of acceleration and growth during uncertain times, accelerated times of change, number one, I can control my mind. I can control what I say. I can control what I feel. Mm -hmm. And I can control what I do. And so when I focus in on those four things and look at them with my inventory of my values, personal, experiential, giving and receiving each day, especially when we're in compressed times of uncertainty, when I take those values into consideration and it allows me to control or practice controlling is I think the best thing I had a line yesterday, uh, right? Progress does not make practice does not make perfection. Uh, practice uh, makes progress and the progress that we make determines is determined by how we practice and so we need to practice what we think we need to practice what we say we need to practice what we feel and then we need to practice what we do those are the four things that we have control of nobody else has control of those four things mm. even you know i have uh, teenage daughters and they'll be like you hurt my feelings i said that's impossible right you control your feelings like how can i hurt your feelings right if you're completely <laughs> secure i'll have to use that yeah, yeah. You know, and, and uh, so I think, you know, if everyone out there is listening, you know, just stick to those four things, what I can think, what I can feel, what I can say and what I can do. And you'll be amazed how you can ch control your environment, even in compressed times of uncertainty, mm. quick times of change, expedited times, financial uh, changes, which are call causing interference and corrosion to our belief system. You can control that. And you can materialize what you want. This more more millionaires were made during the Great Depression than any other time in America. Remember mm -hmm. that. And that's yeah. the people that controlled what they thought, what they felt, what they said, and what they did. And everyone has that opportunity. And I think as a symbol, that ha should be a reminder to everyone to live lucky and believe, say, think, and feel that you're living lucky, and you're going to live lucky. I love it. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, I was um, I was talking to Sean Cannell on a live literally like five minutes ago. And we were talking about how 
uh, emotional states have economic value. There, there's an economic value to your emotional state. Uh, because if you're feeling crappy, you're going to make crappy decisions. If you're feeling awesome, you're going to make awesome decisions. And so our hills are, were already steep. Like Dave Meltzer's hill, even though he's Dave Meltzer, it's already a steep hill. You know, Trey nice. Ross hill is steep. Every single listener, your hill was already steep. Now it's just steeper, right? So now it's like, all right, we just need to work harder to prime ourselves and to focus on um, you know, the things that allow us to get into an economically valuable state such that we're making good decisions that lead to great decisions, which lead to... Yeah. And we, remember too, right? Money is an energy, right? Emotions are energy in motion. Money is a currency. That means it's an object of energy that you put into flow to get what you want. So when you have that emotional attachment, you're controlling your current. And mm -hmm. that current will allow you in the economics of emotion. I saw that up there. Yeah, that was uh, good. Absolutely, Blaine. Uh, so remember, all of these energies coordinate with one another and are controlled by one person, you. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's only one person that stands in your way to make your probabilities your reality. That's mm -hmm. you. There's only one person that is the creator of the possibilities to the probabilities. That's you. And I think you uh, set forth a great, clear depiction with that hat. And no doubt, right, Tony Robbins knows this stuff. I just want to add the four, the four things in there, what we think, emotionally what we feel, what we say, and what we do. Dude, it's great to see you. I'm still working on your favor. I'm still working on it. I appreciate that, it's, man. You're you good. I'm like, hey, Trey, man, I appreciate you. No problem. Trey, take care, my friend. I'll you talk too, to you Dave. soon. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. Cool. There's some great entrepreneurs out there. Uh, and... Uh, uh, <laughs> how do I write a bestseller after multiple failures? That's when you write them, man. That's when I wrote mine. And first of all, there's no failures. There's just like lessons. Life is full of lessons. You're going to keep on learning the lessons uh, until you learn them, right? It's going to result in pain, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional pain until you learn the lessons, not only as individual consciousness, but as a collective consciousness, this pain that we're uh, struggling with, uh, is for a lesson, right? We're going to learn valuable lessons. And if you haven't already picked up a few, because I sure have, then you're missing out. How can I tell my parents to quit college to chase my dreams? Well, number one, um, you don't necessarily have to quit qu college to chase your dreams. You know, let's be real. I'm a both guy. Uh, college is not that hard. Uh, and there's plenty of things you can learn in college as well as get relationship capital. I don't think financially you need to load yourself up uh, with debt to go to college, uh, but there's plenty of places to get educated and to experience the social networking and build, you know, that side of the capital infrastructure, which you need in order to facilitate chasing your dreams. Uh, so if you can afford to go to college, do both. Chase your dreams while you're in college. You don't got to be a straight A student. Uh, you know, I have highly academic children and I told my oldest one who got a scholarship to college, I said, hey, you know, if it was me, and I was your age, I, you know, you don't have to get all A's. Get all A's in one B. Because I've always learned that to get all A's takes twice as much work as it does to get all A's in a B. That last class, man, whew, it takes twice as much work. So uh, do both. Think both. Think abundantly. There's enough of everything for everyone. Let's go ahead and uh, take some questions here. Please uh, post them up there. What's the biggest lesson, takeaway, you've learned so far during this time? Um. The biggest lesson is once again about my ego. It always stems from radical humility. The biggest lesson is just how much I wasted uh, before. Uh, I've always been a student in my calendar, practicing that. Uh, but I uh, was ego driven, you know, to walk around with huge posse to make sure uh, under the advisement of people that didn't know what they were talking about, you know, that we have to do it live, you know, and that was just ego. And I wasted millions of dollars. Uh, I'm sure uh, where I could have efficiently utilized uh, technology in a better way uh, and created way more uh, productivity and accessibility uh, by using technology. So uh, I'm going to make some adjustments uh, as we pull through this and uh, do a lot more remotely and save uh, sparingly my trips so I can spend more time uh, in the office with my family at home uh, and be three, four, or five times productive. So great lessons of uh, radical humility, <laughs> as always. Uh, how to change some people with 
their minds. Never, never can you change somebody. No, 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 no. Anybody out there that's a parent, you're going to know this. As a child, you should know this. You're not going to change anybody. What your job is to understand. Your job is to understand and pray for their happiness. Uh, and that is your job. You are wasting your time, energy, and emotion to try to change. It's like hitting your head against a, a wall. No, no. Understand, learn the lessons, share the lessons, and pray for their happiness. Don't try to change anyone. When we go through the process of understanding, both parties learn. When we go to the process of change, we get resistance, we get voice shortages and obstacles. Uh, the great Wayne Dyer, right? What you resist persists. And uh, we do not want to create resistance, interference, and voids to those important relationships that you think you need to change. Got to change the way my dad is. Are you trying to change a 65-year-old man? Not a chance. Understand him and pray for his happiness. Things will change. And when you change the way you look at things through understanding the things you look at change, it must be Wayne Dyer Day. Uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer, thank you. May you rest in peace. I know you're looking over. I'm channeling through you all the time. You're a genius. Only guy that works out to Wayne Dyer, by the way. Um, how do you, <clears throat> let me see here. Uh, I've also pinned uh, my text number. Go to uh, my Instagram profile. Go ahead and sign up. We have a training for free tomorrow. The Road to Revenue, Strength, Health, and Happiness, inspired by Wim Hof, uh, the Iceman. Uh, come join me uh, for at 11 a.m. Pacific time for training tomorrow. Text me uh, for an invite as well, 949-298-2905. Samir, Power of Intention, one of the great basketball players and entrepreneurs. Talk about an Eastern European attitude towards life. The man is tough, and he knows how to use the telephone. Two things that I love, 11 and 11. Thank you, Jesse. That's 11-11. You got it. In New York, I get it twice a day. Uh, so I'm bored on January 11th. I'm a one 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 guy. Uh, hopefully I won't hang up on you as I fix my earpiece. Uh, after Corona, I wish you'd come to do a seminar in Paris. Yeah, man, let's do it online. I'm doing a lot of mastermind seminars, speeches online, uh, and I'll put up a fancy background. Let's get it going. How do you rest? Um, well, I am a student of my calendar and I study what I have planned and I plan rest. I study what I don't have planned, the white space of my calendar and I plan rest. And also uh, I am a student of my sleep. And so uh, there's physical rest and then there's emotional acceleration and that's my sleep. Uh, I'm letting my body the best I can rejuvenate uh, and cleaning the connection, getting out of my conscious way um, to do that uh, while I sleep. I'm trying to read the comments as well. Multitasking. Keep all the questions coming. Let's see here. Let's go live with somebody. We've got so many different. I like this guy, Jeff, the entrepreneur. I'm not sure if I've met you before, Jeff. Welcome uh, to the live. We register by sending the text. Yeah. If you register, I'll send you the link to, to register if you text me. Thank you so much. Hello. I got your ceiling, Jeff, the entrepreneur. Oh, sorry, man. I'm just making a sale here. Oh man, I don't want to interrupt money. Money no, doesn't. We're, we're good. I'm mean, working from the office. That, that's one sale going on right there. So we're doing exterior roofs. No matter what, man, you keep hustling, right? That dude, I'm so happy to see you doing that. It's like we just talked about having mindset, emotional control, actions, and what you say. Look, there's a way. There's, you know, when things slow down, I think it's easier when things get struggling, right? When yeah. things get, I smile through yeah. struggle because, you know. When everybody's doing it, I was used to joke around with Sidney Frank, the guy who created Grey Goose Vodka, right? He would say, Dave, uh, when the guy that's shining your shoes tells you a stock tip, yeah. you know, time to sell all your stocks. This is when the cream, this is when the cream makes its money. This is why during the Depression, more billionaires were made than ever. All right, my brother, Jeff the Entrepreneur, I'm sure you got a question for you. Yeah, I do have one question. How, because I, I've actually been more productive. I do days out doing sales for here, and I do days in my office. I actually have been doing coaching sessions for people because I made some money online and I'm launching a software. How do you find the way? Because I'm in my home office most of the time. Is that how do you find the way to be the most productive? Like what study? Most yeah, study your calendar with a lens of productivity, which is how much value are you providing? So when you start analyzing and studying, I'm talking about paying attention and putting your intention into your calendar to create those coincidences of efficiency, effectiveness, and statistical success. You know, I have a philosophy every day, I try to find four minutes, why? If I can find four minutes to save every day, I save 24 hours a year for the rest of my life, 
right? I tell people all the time, you find, you'll put your keys in your wallet in the same place, you'll save 80 hours a year. That's on average what people waste looking for things, right? There's yeah. so many places by studying your calendar, the productivity of your calendar, the white space, the, the what you don't have planned, especially for someone like you, really study with the lens of productivity, accessibility, how accessible are you to others and how are you accessing what you want? And then of course, you already have that lens of gratitude. Go ahead. Right now, that's the biggest thing. So how accessible now with Instagram lives, um, like I'm going on some other Instagram live, they asked me to go on and speak and everything to get known more, right? So I'm going to be on that at noon. But but what's, um, I almost feel like I'm too accessible. As I'm starting to blow up, I was with Lewis House the other day, me and Lewis House are doing something together. People are reaching out to me and I don't want to be rude to anybody, right? You do a very good one, but I have like one girl who sends me voice message after voice message. And I kind of told her, you know, hey, don't be a drama queen. And she's, you know, started crying. So like, what's the best way to handle that? Yeah, so you need to manage expectations. So what I always do is upfront manage expectations that I answer everything myself. Obviously, I can only do that in so much amount of time. So if I don't get back to you right away, please appreciate and understand why. Uh, and I will get back to you. So, uh, you know, someone like that, you have to manage expectations to say it's not helping you by calling me every five minutes. You know, I'm more than happy to help. So it's all about managing expectations, illuminating the truth, right? Illuminating what we can do and what we can't do. Uh, and when people, you know, there will be a few haters out there. There's some lenses, no matter what, they have a need to be offended, right? If somebody has a need to be offended, it'll always be fed. It's really easy. So what I, what I always do is I tell someone if they're offended or I hurt their feelings, I tell them to call me and I actually give them my cell phone. <laughs> Yeah, and tell uh, tell Lewis House, man, uh, come on over live that I said hi. All right, perfect. Why, is he in here right now? Uh, no, he's not in here right now, but I'd love to get him in here. Yeah, I'll, I'll get him in here then, dude. Yeah, he's actually, uh, you'll see. I'll, I'll let you know. We'll, we'll see. If we're on the move again, man. You know me. All right, All right, right go get him, man. Dad, That's awesome. You're the man. Take care. It's Jeff the Entrepreneur. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, if you haven't checked out Lewis House. Uh, he's another great, uh, inspiring people. Uh, we saw him over with uh, Jordan Belfort living there on uh, the west side of L.A. Hope everybody's health, healthy and happy. Let's get to another question. Uh, you can see where we're going here. Um, let's see. If you just got laid off, what would you do? That, look, if you just got laid off, here's what you do. Right. Number one, wake up as early as you can and go do something for somebody else right? Go provide value, go volunteer your time, go call, call, ask for help. Uh, you know, use the series of questions that I utilize. One, a series of questions of how you can provide service or value, go volunteer. And two, ask other people, hey, do you know anybody that can help me? Uh, I'm looking for these opportunities. If you are looking for opportunities to help yourself by being more interested than interesting, I always use the stock market as my guide to what companies are hiring Right, I go and look at the top 50 performing stocks and I see what capabilities I have that are synergistic and supplementary to those companies. And I would go ahead and call in there and get myself a job. I also would look at the 50 most stable companies uh, and uh, once again, uh, go ahead and see what capabilities that are synergistic or supplementary to those and go apply and get a job. And then finally, uh, look at the 50 companies that have been crushed and uh, go ahead and send them your resume and get involved now uh, because they will recover and they will be hiring, right? Because a lot of people will be in movement that can't afford uh, to not uh, be employed. And so they may move around from getting laid off. And that means that the companies, the 50 companies that have been crushed the most will be hiring. So those are great ways to go ahead, ask a series of questions of how you can provide service or value, go help somebody else. Anybody that's depressed as well, anxious, frustrated, based in the ego, uh, go ahead, do that. Go help somebody and then ask, hey, do you know anybody that can help me? Let's get things flowing. There's plenty of opportunities out there. Uh, thank you so much. Let's get a little bit deeper in here. Um, do you use crystals? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I use my bracelet. I trace calligraphies. Um, and for me, any of uh, the different uh, techniques, uh, the Hoff method, uh, with meditation, water, cold therapy, um, and, uh, of course, commitment, uh, intention, uh, all of these things. I just have two questions for you. If you're interested in crystals or bracelets or calligraphies or the Hoff method, he has a 40-day quarantine challenge that's free. Uh, try it out. There's no risk. Uh, and uh, if it works for you, do it. And if it doesn't, don't do it. 
Uh, hello, everyone from Israel. Thank you. Uh, advise to do at home. Look, do as much as you can from home. You know, figure out what you've always wanted to do, what you should be doing, what you must do. I have a do it now list and I prioritize by what's most important and I figure out how I can get it done from home, whatever it may be. You know, if it's cutting my hair, I'm going on YouTube and figuring out, all right, how do I cut my hair? You know, whatever it may be, uh, let's get it done. How can we do that being quarantined? Oh, uh, Brittany, I'm not sure uh, what it is uh, that we're trying to do, but uh, we could do a lot of different things. Um, and there's great instruction and great information that we can access and great lessons that we could access. And if there is something that you can't do while we're quarantined, then lower it down from your do it now list and keep going to the next thing. There's always stuff that we can do because you always can provide value and help somebody else. So if you're stuck there going, I got nothing to do, promise you there's plenty of people that need our help. Go find, uh, you know, put it in and be more interested than interesting and search out and ask people, you know, how we can get medical supplies or how we can help and you know, volunteer and, you know, hold people's hands. I don't know. There's tons of stuff that we can do. Daily vacation. Can you speak to that? Yeah, Eric. Um, a lot of people, you know, they're under the context, oh, you know, I got to take a month off. I got to, well, if you're one of those people, you got your month. So congratulations. Not me. I take a vacation every day. It's part of my plan. Two minutes a day is with two hours on a Saturday, right? So I take vacation every day. I find something I do that allows me to be on vacation every single day, seven days a week, getting the exponential uh, factoring that's necessary by daily activity. Um, Great question. You should be taking vacations every day. Um, how do you grow a podcast? Um, okay. Uh, to grow your brand or grow a podcast or a TV show or a movie or whatever other content that you want to grow, you need to have number one quality content and you need to consistently have it. Uh, you need to practice uh, the best that you can and keep practicing and get better and better. Know the strength of your signal of your podcast, the spectrum of who you're trying to reach, and try to clarify your message uh, the best that you can. But you need to be consistent. And so, uh, you know, take your eye off of the downloads and the followers and all that. What you want to do is not put a time restraint on it. Focus in on the quality content, the strength of your signal, the spectrum of the signal, and the clarity of your message, and keep practicing. And it audience will grow guaranteed look there's 4.2 billion people that can access any podcast right now so like even if you did a podcast about painting nails there's millions of people that want to listen to that so the audience is there it's those people that you know try to send a podcast out to everybody all 4.2 billion can't get anywhere when you get focused on a strong signal to your you know nail painting clientels and interested people and that's the spectrum that you're looking at and you have a very clear message about painting nails and you know all the different significant things that emotionally they're tied to and the credibility that you have and quantifying and quantifiably giving value of the reasons they should listen and how this is going to impact them and different capabilities that you or your guests have you'll kill it because there's millions of people that want to listen to that uh so that's the, how you get a great podcast. I've been blessed. I focused on, on entrepreneurs and on inspiration, how to clear the connection between that, which inspires you. So you enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential. Uh, great question. How do you ask for help? Uh, I love questions that other people may think is obvious, but it's probably the deepest question uh, and probably most significant question of the day. Uh, you need to learn how to ask for help. It's not inherent in our nature. Uh, the ego, uh, the ego uh, will not allow us to ask for help because it has a feeling of being inferior or superior and separate. And so it likes that. And what we need to do is learn a series of questions on how to ask for help. I've learned, you know, one great transition statement that has helped me ask for help. And I ask for help in person, less today because of social distancing, uh, on the phone, via email, in all media, radio, print, TV, social media. And I know one simple trans transition statement. Do you know anyone that can help me? Ask as many people all day long, in person, on the phone, via email, and media. Do you know anyone that can help me? About blank. Look, if that's all and you say, you will statistically be successful. It's an amazing statement. 
write it down, post it up here. My team's on there. Do you know anyone that can help me? Now, I've created a series of questions, a series of questions that always start with open-ended questions like, hey, what are you doing today? How are you doing today? What do you like about it? What don't you like it? Would it help you if, do you know anyone that could help me? Right? These are asking for help and providing value all in once, creating a void for the universe to fill, having faith that if I create value, that everything else will come through me for others as well so I can provide more value because I can't give what I don't have. Uh, so remember, it's a series of questions of how you can be a value service and also a series of questions, do you know anyone that can help me? Now remember, when you ask someone, do you know anyone that can help me? The first person that comes to mind is themselves. It's just a more subtle, easier way to, to ask. Great ideas to begin a startup, um, create an idea, and then create a monetization plan. You know, don't have to create a whole big business plan when you first start for a startup, but you need a monetization plan. You are just an innovator if you can't figure out how to monetize your idea. You're not an entrepreneur, okay? So if you are just an innovator and you cannot find how do I monetize this idea, then go partner with an entrepreneur, kind of like the McDonald's brothers did with Ray Kroc, right? Great innovators and great entrepreneurs can partner, uh, but if you are and want to be an innovator and an entrepreneur and create your own startup, make sure that you connect the dots backwards on the currency of money the object of energy that we put into the flow. Look, it's not a business. It's not a startup unless it can make money. And so many people, there's millions of great ideas out there, but they're not a business and you're not an entrepreneur until you figure out and connect the dots backwards into some sort of revenue, okay? Uh, so make sure you have that on your vision, uh, in your plan. Put your attention and your intention to it. Uh, let's go ahead and take uh, one more question here. Uh, I feel like I'm in a rut, analysis paralysis. Very common, Marv. Um, if you feel like you're stuck, I always say, then get stuck getting stuck. You're close. So like a blade of grass, this is what happens. This is why 99% of the people quit when they're you know, 25% of the way there. And then of that 1%, another 99% quit when they're 50% of the way there. And it only takes half as much time to get there and then half as much time to get to 100. Look here. A blade of grass, right? Oh, you see warm, soft, moist dirt. And then it gets to the soil and it's all dry, especially in California. And it's like, oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. You know what you need to do? You got to get focused. You got to keep on pressing, 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 pressing. And then you'll break through. Get stuck getting stuck. Go ahead, get focused, pay attention to why, be more interested than interesting. Go ahead and ask the series of questions of how you could provide value and how and who can help you. This is the time, do not quit. This is, start enjoying and smiling through the struggle. Smile, right, you're not paralyzed, you're just breaking through, right? Just breaking through, breaking through, breaking through, and eventually you will break through, but you gotta get stuck on getting stuck. You're not gonna break through, you know, pivoting from what you know is right. You, you, you may realize there's a better way, right? So a lot of times, you know, we try, we're trying to run around it. We're trying to go over it. We're trying to dig under it. But by getting stuck, you might just find the key and open the door and walk right through. All right? So get stuck getting stuck, and you'll find do not quit. Enjoy the consistent every day, persistence without quit, uh, resilience, pursuit, right? That's a guaranteed inspiration. When we're pursuing something, we're inspired of your potential, what you're looking for of your pursue that potential of yours. It's part in your conscious, your subconscious and your unconscious. You were born with certain potentials. Let's expose those. Let's realize those sometimes put into a different situation. Like now, some of our weaknesses become strengths and some of our strengths become weaknesses. We all have been moved. And so remember, uh, all strength moved can be a weakness and all weaknesses can be strength. The Iceman interview is a must. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Uh, there's so many different people. Posh, thank you so much. Uh, keep them coming. Let's get one more question. I think I'm going to go live at 830 with a special guest, a true champion. Let's see here. Uh, how do you get out of depression? Okay, getting out of depression is a practice. Okay, it doesn't happen overnight. I can't just tell you, hey, look at the glass half full and that will pull you out of it. Uh, but it is a practice. So the first thing is to is acknowledge 
the practice of getting out of depression. Uh, and so what we have to do is practice canceling our negative thoughts, clearing the connection to that which inspires us, volunteering and providing value and service to others, getting ourselves a dose of our priorities. And so looking at exercise, stretching, meditation, whatever makes you feel good, we want to find and create a practice to find your highest frequency at the beginning of the day. And then uh, from there, when we find our highest frequency at the beginning of the day, whenever we're off of that and we feel depressed, um, then, then go ahead and go back to that higher place that you found in the morning. But it is a practice. Stick to it. Help other people to always make you feel good. Happiness is the best virus in the world. It's spread by witnessing it. And there she is. Hello. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're never interrupting. How are you? Oh, I th doing all right. Doing as good as I think we can be doing now. And, uh, you know, staying positive, focusing on what I have control over and taking a deep breath with things I don't have control over. How about you? You know, the same thing. I just talked about the four things that we have control over, our mind, our emotions, what we think and what we say. Uh, and those are the four things that I'm staying focused. I truly believe I'm in the middle of a miracle. You know, I'm someone who has always smiled through the struggles. I'm blessed to be old and have been uh, able to learn the lessons from all the struggles that I've learned and enjoy those and be able to move and shift to help other people and now be in a position to help even more. By the way, this is uh, the great Julia Landauer, champion NASCAR driver. Hello, and everybody. She's so awesome full uh you're just an incredible person um so talking about mindset obviously focus is a key component of being a championship driver uh and in your life you're an extremely focused person what are some of the techniques that people can use to stay focused which to me is paying attention and intention to create the coincidences we want how, how can people focus on what they want during these times that are very distracting yeah so that's a great question i think there are kind of two things that I like to really like narrow in on. And one is when sitting down to do something like commit to doing it, we shouldn't be multitasking a lot. We shouldn't, you know, I don't have any alerts on my phones or any pop-ups or notifications except for texts and phone calls and, and WhatsApp. But so for any social media, it's like, I check that when I intentionally want to, I don't let it interrupt me. And when you're sitting down to do something, um, you know, just, putting away the distractions. And then on a kind of bigger level, I think reminding yourself why you are doing this at all. And sometimes we can get bogged down by all the little details. But when you remember why you're do, doing something, if you like, what would be the negative consequence of not staying focused? Is it worth letting yourself get distracted if it's going to negatively impact the long term goal. And for me, I've always been fairly disciplined. And so for me, that really works. But you got to remember why you're doing something. And if you don't feel compelled to, you know, dedicate the time needed, then maybe you should shift your focus and shift what you're doing. That's awesome. I, you know, one thing I've learned is that we can't multitask. So one thing that changed me was in understanding how the mind works is that it's actually the people that can multitask or seem to multitask, they actually switch focus quickly, quickly. So one of the things that's interesting is, do you want to, you know, shift your focus quickly to something that's irrelevant or not, not important? And yeah. be, right. And so being able to know uh, through taking inventory of our values, what's important to us, because that ties in the why, uh, of what we're doing and being able to prioritize things. So I think, you know, whether you have notifications or not, and it was so funny because as you're saying, I don't get notifications. I still am like clearing notifications of my calendar <laughs> and all this stuff off the top of my screen. And, and literally, you know, I think it's okay uh, for people to understand how focus works, that if you want to stay focused, you number one, have to either stay on the, the topic and not have distractions or if you do move your focus to something else, practice like a race car driver, quick and getting back to the focus that you're on. And yeah. I'm sure your mind uh, does that just from the practice of being a NASCAR champion of you're looking at different things and focusing, but you're able to quickly get back to the, the road and path in front of you. And I'm going to use that as a lead in, uh, you know, I, the way focus works and the driving analogy that is so critical for today is when you're practicing driving, if you're focusing in on the wall, you're more likely to hit the wall, right? Exactly. Yeah. Like you, they all, coaches always say like, 
look where you want to go, not where you don't want to go. You know, you don't think about the wall because then you're going to look at the wall and then you're likely to go. Your eyes, your hands go where your eyes go. Um, and I think to your point of being able to bounce around is really important because if you think about racing and any other sport for that instance, you know, there are interruptions, you know, if there's a foul in, you know, a more traditional sport, then people have to stop, they're out of the zone. You know, if there's a caution flag and we have to stop racing, we get distracted and then we have to immediately get back in the zone. So it is a training thing that you do and you can do it with apps during physical training. You can, you know, anyone can practice that. And I think that's really important. And I kind of want to backtrack one second because when we talk about focus and like fully dedicating to one thing, I think there, there are obviously two ends of that spectrum. I was listening to, you know, Taylor Swift's documentary and she, you know, dedicate, like she, when she writes a song, she sees it through to the end. Whereas I'm really on the other end of the spectrum. If I feel like I'm getting burnt out with something, I intentionally stop shift my focus to another thing that uses a different part of my brain maybe and then go back to it so there are different ways to make it work it's not like you have to just you know hole up and complete something start to finish so just want to make that I, you know, that's okay. super cool I didn't, I didn't realize you were a taylor swift fan also that's yeah I have to admit, big taylor swift fan. <laughs> <laughs> um one of the practices that we talk about we were launching uh the playbook today the podcast with you which is one of my favorites so everybody has to go check that out but practicing ending fear you know, if someone ran into you on the street, they would never know that your profession is one in which most likely is like today for everyone. We're taking our lives into our own hands. Um, and, you, you know, never before have I coached so many people on practicing ending fear. And it's always a practice. You're you're I, I imagine you still get afraid every day. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, so do I. So yep. do I. I've just made it a practice to get back to center to the productivity, accessibility and gratitude that I want to live in. What are some of the techniques that you use, you know, as a championship race car driver and all the things that you've really pushed yourself through the limitations and barriers? What are some of the things that you use to get through and practice ending fear? Yeah, that's a great question. It's something that I've focused on more like I do motivational speaking and talking about this a lot because it's so relevant, especially now. So I think a big part of fear is being okay with it being there at first. And I think learning and, and building up the self awareness to know how fear manifests itself in you like I know, a form of fear is getting really anxious and jittery and nervous and wanting to put off things and procrastinate. For me, that's a symbol of fear. Um, there's also the, the way it physically manifests in my body and how I physically get uncomfortable. And so recognizing that, and then there are a handful of techniques we can use. So I think um, if you can do physical bursts of energy to kind of expel the negative energy, so whether that's dropping and doing a few push-ups, before every race, I sprint to the bathroom and I sprint to my car because that little sprint really calms me down and gets my heart rate going it just endorphins you know all that stuff um but then there's also i think breathing is so important and i was introduced to the importance of breathing originally through laird hamilton and gabby reese who are professional athletes and you know just kind of that that did a deep dive after that and doing things like deep diaphragm breathing where you focus on expanding your stomach instead of opening up through your chest and just doing really slow deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth um, can really help calm you down if you go through a few cycles and then there's also square breathing which is something the military uses where you breathe in for four seconds hold for four seconds breathe out for four seconds and hold and it, it can be challenging and um but it you know, breathing helps bring you back to normal. And it's something you can always do at any point, no matter what physical limitations you have. Um, and I think those are really good. And then, and then the last thing is more mental and it's kind of asking yourself, why not do something? And again, it requires self-awareness, but if you can't, you know, give yourself a really valid reason not to do something besides the fact it makes you uncomfortable, you owe it to yourself to try. Right on. Well, I'm going to switch the tables on you. I get to interview you on the playbook. There's people that are asking down there. You can get it anywhere. Apple, Google, Entrepreneur. It's distributed everywhere. Go check it out. And uh, you can text me at that number below, 949-298-2905, if you have any other questions. But I'm going to switch the tables. Your turn to ask me a question. Yeah. Okay. So when when and this kind of really relevant today you know when do you have a go-to to get you out a, of a doom and gloom downward spiral and like i think we can all do that but do you have a very solid go-to that you know will help you feel better i do I, I have it's called cancel clear and connect 
And so I've made it really simple. You know, number one, I meditate first thing in the morning to find my highest frequency. Other people may want to race cars or go swimming or jump rope or, you know, watch TV. But my highest frequency is found through meditation and breathing, as you suggested. But during the day, I'm dealing with the ego. And the ego is what creates that uh, separation that you're explaining to people. And so I actually practice just saying cancel. And so I, if I have a thought that's negative uh, or an ego-based conscious thought, I just literally say sometimes out loud cancel. And then I control through those four things, what I think, what I say, what I do, and what I feel. I cancel if it's not something that I want to think say, do, or feel, because those are the four things that I can control. So I physically say, cancel. In fact, sometimes it's really a Tourette's-like. I'll be giving, like you, an inspirational speech and or coaching someone, and I'll say something out of ego, and I'll just slip and say it out loud instead of think it. So it'll be something weird, like I'm sitting at a stop sign, and if somebody hits you from behind when you're texting, you're accountable, oh, cancel. And people are looking around, what did you say? Because right? I don't because I don't want to be hit from behind, right? Because I asked myself, you know, what did I do to attract this to myself? And what am I supposed to learn from it? So cancel and then clear is in those times that and everyone's had this, that you can't get something out of your mind, especially obsessive compulsive people like you and I, Julia, hate, hate to expose you. Um, no, that's okay. All right. champions are OCD. Uh, yeah. We have to clear. So what happens is within the context of the 40,000 of the same thoughts we have every day in our subconscious, it attracts the same thought. And that's why we're like, let it go, let it go. It's okay. I'm sure people before they go to bed or when they wake up have had this circumstance. So I breathe as you suggested and you use um, Wim Hof, the Hof method of breathing. I had him yesterday, we had a great conversation, but I breathe and I keep saying clear because I want to clear that subconscious thought uh, out of my way. And then connect is if it keeps coming back, even after clearing uh, some really disturbing things have happened in this life or past lives. I try to figure out why and how and where it comes from so I can clear the interference because my philosophy is I'm connected at all times to the greatest source of energy, light, love, and lessons at all times. And whenever I'm not feeling at that highest frequency or I'm not achieving a higher frequency, I'm working on clearing the connection to suck in as much of that source light energy and love and lessons this is why I believe I'm in the middle of a miracle. And I'm not afraid to tell people that I know people are struggling. So am I, right? I own businesses. I have employees. I'm keeping everybody employed. I have five kids at my house, my niece and my four children. I have a wife and a dog and Nick. I have everything, but I'm in the middle of a miracle because I'm controlling the four things that I can through cancel, clear, connect. I love that question. All right, last yeah. thing. Any last piece of advice uh, from a great champion that you would give people during these these struggles? Um, yes, during, specifically during something like this, um, I think it is so important to reach out to people who you care about, maybe you haven't talked with in a while. That's something that's been surprising is you realize how many people you probably should keep in touch with more regularly, but this is kind of like a reset to do that. And I think FaceTime and that face-to-face -face contact, phone calls are really good, texting is really good, but if you can get that face-to-face -face contact, you just get to pick up the little things. You know, I get to look at you and I get to see the little nuances and, you know, relate to you in that way. And that's so powerful. And so, especially when we're isolating, some people like isolating, other people really don't like isolating. Do what you can to step up for your community, but then also depend on them when you need it. And don't be afraid to ask for that help, you know? You're a genius. I adore oh, no, you. You're a genius. Let me know how I can be of service to you. I'm a true fan. Come join me again. Thank you for helping so many people. And if you haven't checked out Julia, please do, especially today on the playbook. Go ahead, download and uh, listen to the, the podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. Have a great day. You too. Stay happy and healthy. You too. All right. We got a couple more minutes. Uh, we are so blessed to have Julia on. And she's an extraordinary woman, leader inspirational speaker, incredible person, obviously, um, and a perfect person to talk about practicing ending fear, because uh, what she does, woo, every day is incredible. And she does it on and off the track. She is an accelerator. Uh, amazing, amazing. All right, let's take a, a last question. Yes, great guest, I agree. Don't forget to text me at 949-298-2905. We're doing a free training tomorrow, 11 a.m. Please join me. Uh, um, let's look here. How do you handle staying consistent? Oh, 
uh, practice, uh, lower the bar. I tell, look, I start, if, if you want to start being consistent, start with the most powerful thing to be consistent with, which is gratitude. It takes 0.1 seconds in the morning, 0.1 seconds at night to say thank you. Uh, I'm going to give everyone here a 30-day challenge. I know Wim Hof has his 40-day challenge. I'm in the calendar club, by the way. Uh, my boy, Colin uh, Grady and, and uh, Jesse Etzler, they're running a mile according to the day. So they ran a mile yesterday, two miles, then three, four, all the way to 30 uh, or 31 miles, whatever the end of this month is. So I uh, joined there. I have a sub club, uh, not for the endurance freaks like those guys, but for the speed and strength, the guys who really know how to move. So I'm doing the calendar club with them, uh, yards. So I ran a yard yesterday. Go check out my video. I'll run two yards uh, today, and three yards tomorrow, et cetera, et cetera. By the end of the month, I'll be total. I think it comes to 465 total yards. Uh, I know it's impressive, but you got to sprint them. If you want to join the Dave Meltzer Sprint Calendar Club as well, go ahead and text me. Uh, but daily routines, say thank you, practice, create the habit machine, understand and lower the bar. If you want to work out, set your uh, limitation to, at minimum, I'm going to put my shoes on today. At minimum, I'm going to say thank you at the end of the day. At minimum, I'm going to do this. I don't work in exact time is a man-made construct. It creates limitations, shortages, voids, obstacles, and interference to what we want. So I set minimums, and I do it every single day. And that's what creates consistency. And then I create this habit machine. So whatever I want in my life, I'm able just to put it into the machine, and all of a sudden, I'm, I'm doing that. Uh, so that's awesome. I think I got time for one quick more question Please join me tomorrow for my free training, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, come join me. Uh, and uh, there we go. Um, love this question to finish up on. Uh, who leads the leader? Uh, <laughs> the people. So who leads the leader? Uh, others. The, the, the collective consciousness. Uh, I'm led by the greatest source power, light, love, and lessons that allows me to be followed and to be a leader among the context of oneness. What's great about what we're doing right now, if I see John Asroff on there, what's up, my man? The law of Goya, get off your ass. But uh, the oneness, if you understand a tree has no branches, right? If you understand the power and source that we are all connected, then we lead. We lead each other. Who leads the leader? The source of light, love, and lessons that exist between all of us. And in this time, we are unifying and learning that uh, by being quarantined uh, with our immediate relatives uh, and then being united to our neighborhoods and then united to our communities, then our cities, then our states, and then our country, and now even the world. This great unification is why I'm in the midst of a miracle. I'm in the midst of a miracle, a re-engineering, a repurposing to understand and re-coordinate values so that we can be more productive, more accessible, and more grateful. Uh, this is where we stand. There are struggles, and these struggles are extraordinary, uh, but the lessons are even better, I promise you. The lessons always outweigh the struggle, and uh, we can frame and form whatever we want, uh, but we lead each other and that's who leads me the we leads me go ahead team you could post that the we leads me uh if you don't mind text me at 949-298-2905 so i always forgive myself when i let go yes forgive yourself so you can give to others i'll squeeze one in there 949-298-299 go to my store you can also register for training tomorrow at 11 a.m this is a great community mark miller good to see you as well thank you everybody for joining me we are going to do it again. The we leads me. Thank you, Jake, for setting up Julia Landauer. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Check out Wim Hof, his 40-day challenge as well. John Asaroff, check him out. Uh, Jesus, thank you so much. Uh, remember, everybody, stay healthy, happy, and strong. Be kind to your future self and do good deeds. Have a great day. You're in the midst of a miracle.